Hello, and welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast. I'm your host, Elisa Shuck. Whether you're going for that next promotion, looking for a job, or making a career pivot, I'll teach you how to navigate it all so you can have the career you want. Welcome to episode 99. If you want to have a career that's thriving, you've got to be selling. I may have just scared a few people right now, but here is the truth. People are selling all the time. Most people think selling is hard. And sometimes that's because we've had bad sales experiences, right? Like the one I really hate the most is buying a new car. I've gotten to the point where I don't even go (laughs) to the dealership anymore until my husband has vetted everything out. He's got it figured out, maybe two options, but I just have to show up and, you know, kind of give the thumbs up, let him know I'm in. Sometimes we've had pushy salespeople. Sometimes you've experienced salespeople that ignore you. Maybe you're going into some new high-end place just for fun or just because it's something you want to do and no one is paying attention to you. Believe it or not, that person is also selling. Now, they are not selling something you want to buy. Maybe it it feels like judgment. It feels like, uh, you know, you don't belong, but they're selling something. And when you are navigating your career, when you are creating a thriving career, you need to be selling too. But why is it so hard to sell yourself? That is the question. Here's what someone taught me a long time ago. And that is a sale is nothing more than a transfer of belief and enthusiasm. The cool thing about that is when you are transferring belief and enthusiasm about you and you can do it so naturally and with ease and certainty, other people will be buying what you are selling. Think about this. Anytime you have influenced someone, It doesn't matter if you have influenced someone, a little one in your household to do their chores, eat something, whatever it is, you have influenced, my friend. Anytime you're at work and someone decides to go with your idea, maybe you're a creative person, you don't think of yourself as a salesperson at all, but they've gone with your idea. That means you sold them something. It means you transferred your belief and enthusiasm around that idea to the point where they captured that belief and it changed the game. This is how you can be thinking about selling yourself throughout your career. That could be with your team. It could be a career move you're making and you're interviewing with people. That's another way. Maybe it's with your boss. Maybe you're trying to influence the company direction, what's going on. You want to be that strategy person, that partner in the business, in the initiatives. Then Learning how to sell yourself is a key component of creating a career that you really love, a career that's thriving, and a career that's everything you imagine it could be. So let's talk about what's happening when you are not paying attention to what you're selling. You might be selling indecision because you're not stepping into that confidence and that belief and enthusiasm in the ideas that you have. So instead of conviction, you're selling indecision. You might be selling lack of clarity. If you're all over the place, if you haven't connected the dots for yourself from your career 
past, your career history, and all of that value to what you want and where you're going, then that lack of clarity that you have for yourself is what you're selling to the other person. It's why they don't get it. It's why they're distracted. It's why you didn't get the job offer. Some things to think about. Maybe you're selling indifference. If you don't have a certain sense of passion and connection to what you're doing, then you might be selling indifference in those daily interactions with your team or your boss or who your vendors. Can you imagine? If you know what you want and you need to negotiate that, you need to really believe it down deep. It has to be a decision that you've made. Otherwise, that indifference is going to transfer to the other person. Maybe you're selling disbelief. And this is a tough one. Because believing in ourselves is a habit, is a lifestyle that we need to constantly be working on. Every level that you decide to go, every time you decide to elevate, then you need to elevate your belief in yourself. We've all come to a place where we believe in ourselves at the current level, or we wouldn't be where we are today. So to achieve the next level, to achieve the career move, to achieve the revenue goal, whatever it is, then we need to also elevate our belief in our own capacity to make that happen, or we're just selling disbelief to ourselves and to the people around us, the people who need what you have to offer, my friend, the value that you bring to the table. So let's talk about a few scenarios where selling yourself comes into play and how you can do it more effectively, how you can transfer that belief and enthusiasm. The first one I want to talk about is your team. These are people who are currently following you. If you're a leader, if you have a team, then People are following you. And if they're following you, they're looking for a strong sense of direction and purpose from you. So how do you sell yourself as that kind of leader, as that kind of person who people will walk through walls for? Such a cool feeling as a leader when you know you've got a team around you that will do that you've got to nurture it. You've got to sell yourself to them so that they will walk through those walls. They will stand alongside you and deliver the kind of results that you all need in that position on that team. Well, the first step I suggest for selling to your team is to share often. Let them know what's happening even if it's not good news. Sometimes as a leader, you you want to paint this picture that it's all rosy and wonderful. And I totally get that. I totally get there are moments where you stand in the gap for your team. You're the buffer from the toxic person above you. You try not to let that toxicity and that negativity flow out to them. But there is something to be said for letting them know what's happening, even if it's not good news. It might be something like, hey, everybody, we didn't get the budget that we asked for for this project. Hey, we didn't get the extension of time that we asked for about getting this thing done, but here's what we're going to do instead. Or how can we manage this together? in the absence of the resources that we asked for. This is you letting them know what's happening. This is you involving them in what's going on, in how to move forward. And this is the way they will learn to trust you. If you shield them too much, it's not that they're not gonna trust you, but there's gonna be a limit 
to that trust. And you want that trust to go deep. You want that trust to go wide. So this little bit of vulnerability, this little bit of, hey, I'm letting you in on something because we are in this together, goes such a long way to selling yourself to them on a regular basis because now they know their success matters to you. And the reason their success should matter to you is because when they experience success, so do you. Your success, your growth, your thriving career, if you're in a position of leadership, is a direct byproduct of the achievements and success of your team. Let's look at another one. How do you sell yourself to your boss? First of all, I always suggest that you be proactive. This is proactive communication. This is keeping them in the loop. When you are proactive, you're showing up as a partner. You're showing up as someone who cares about what they care about because you are letting them know what's happening very similar to the team thing. And you can let them know, hey, here's what's happening on the team. Here's the status of what we're working on. You don't actually have to quote unquote sell because as I said, selling is just showcasing belief and enthusiasm. And when you have that about your day to day even, and you're sharing that kind of information in a way that helps them connect with it, because of your belief and your enthusiasm and your the proactive nature of your communication, they start to connect with you. Selling your ideas gets easier and easier and easier when you are sharing often. It's not just a once in a blue moon kind of thing. They get used to you coming to them. They get used to you showcasing your team, giving credit to the other people on the team. Think how much belief they will have in you when you're leveraging all of the value that you and your team are adding to the company in your communication with them. Super duper powerful. It's an incredible way to sell yourself, to market yourself to your boss easily and effortlessly. It works. Truly, it works. Now, how do you sell yourself in those moments where you are trying to elevate? Maybe you're going for a promotion and you've got to meet with somebody new. Maybe you want to move to a new area You've upskilled, you've done some things, there's a new department, a new team that you want to be part of. Maybe you're making your career move and you want to showcase your value. You want to market yourself to that new company, that new industry. Well, the first way is to always be curious. It sounds a little counterintuitive that asking questions would actually be you selling yourself, but it is. When consultants come into an organization, first of all, they've typically been invited. And if you are in an interview, if someone has accepted your meeting request to find out about that new position on that new team and that new department, then consider yourself invited, my friend. And when you ask questions, You are actually selling yourself. You're actually marketing yourself because you're showing that you care. It's such a powerful thing. And asking questions is always a way to create deeper understanding, to find out what's going on with them, understand before you seek to be understood before it's it's that sales process. If you seek to understand and then put out what you're selling, it goes so much better because you've opened up more of a dialogue in that conversation. Another way to help sell yourself, to market yourself in these prospective 
kinds of situations is to own your accomplishments. Take a closer look at the accomplishments and your role in those accomplishments and own it. Don't disregard it. Don't downplay it. Don't edit stuff out because you think that owning it is arrogant. It's not. One definition of imposter syndrome is a confident person who doesn't internalize the value of their accomplishments. So if you find yourself bumping up against imposter syndrome, when you're having these kinds of conversations and interviews, times that you want to elevate, guess what? You probably haven't internalized those accomplishments. You haven't owned them at a deep level. When you do, you are going to start increasing belief in yourself. And that is such an important aspect of selling yourself. As I said throughout this episode, selling is nothing more than a transfer of belief and enthusiasm. You can't transfer belief that you don't have. So look for those ways that you can increase your belief in yourself, giving yourself credit for the accomplishments that you've already achieved and super important, celebrating it. There is a chemical reaction in our brain that when we celebrate it changes things. It seals the deal, if you will, and our brain wants more of it. It loves that chemical reaction. When you celebrate your accomplishments, you're empowering yourself to do more, but you're also empowering yourself with belief. Without belief and enthusiasm, you'll be selling mediocrity instead of excellence. And I know you are not a mediocre person, my friend. So don't sell yourself in a mediocre way. Create that belief and enthusiasm. Don't do a disservice to yourself or the significant people in your work life. The people you're around now, the people in your future who really need someone like you. Don't do a disservice to your career by not applying belief and enthusiasm to sell you on you and to sell them on you. All right, my friend, I'll talk to you again next time. Be sure to check out the membership program, Control Your Career at elisashuck-careercoach.com. You are going to spend 90,000 hours at work, my friend. That's 30% of your life. You might as well take control of it. Control Your Career gives you all of the resources you need to take charge of your own professional and career development so you can create the thriving career that you imagine for yourself. I will see you there.